Welcome to Unlocking Science. Our goal is to glorify God by studying and unlocking the secrets of His amazing creation. I'm your host, Mr. P, and I'm joined today by Dr. Jennifer Hall Rivera, and she is going to help me talk about fruits, fruits and nuts. Now, this isn't an episode about California. It's about <laughs> lots of different things that God has created for us to enjoy. So when you think about the idea of plants and fruits in connection to the Bible, when do they show up in the Bible? They actually show up on day three of the creation week because the Bible tells us that God created, uh, mm -hmm. separated the dry land from the waters and caused all the plants to form. Yeah, so we them. have so, mm -hmm. plants with the fruits and seeds right there from the mm -hmm. very beginning of creation. And when we think about that from an evolutionary perspective, it's actually very, very backward mm -hmm. to the way mm -hmm. that it would be described in that scenario. So we have a clear description in the Bible of plants being created and them having seeds in them and fruit. And then those are given to both humans and the animals as their main food source. Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning, everything had a vegetarian diet, yes. which is different than the way, way we have things today. Have you ever tried to go vegetarian for a while or anything like that? No, I mean, I don't eat a lot of meat, mm -hmm. but I do like my steak. Yes. I, I do. <laughs> me too. I'll admit it. <laughs> so. I've, I've had people try to tell me a portobello mushroom is as good as a steak, but mm, I enjoy mushrooms yeah. a lot, but I'll enjoy <laughs> that steak as well. And we're thankful to God for all of these amazing creations of His, and we're going to talk a little bit about all the different things that we've got here. Now, we've done a previous episode on the function of flowers, and today we're going to be talking about the function of fruits. And flowers and fruits are very tightly connected together. Now, when we think about a fruit, we're going to come up with a botanical definition today. So botany is the study of plants and everything connected to them. So our, our botanical definition of fruit is a little different than what you might think of as normal fruits and vegetables when we talk about them. So we'll, we'll get through all of those things. So if we think about the flowers, like this lily that we've got here, we discussed these flowers and all the structures that are in them. And we said that the flower's job is reproduction. And this lily has the basic parts. We have the male parts here with the anther, with the stamen and the filament. And then we have the female part, which is down here inside. In the middle, if we pull all these back, the ovary down here, the whole thing is called the pistil. We can see the tip of it up here where the pollen catches and goes down here inside. Now, without these parts, what would happen to this lily as it tried to grow and, and next season this plant tries to come up? Would it have any seeds to be able to reproduce? No, it's very important that it has its male and female parts and it has the ability to reproduce. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it can reproduce after its kind. After its kind, just like mm -hmm. scripture gives us. Mm -hmm. So we can see lilies growing from both seeds and we also see them growing in other ways from the bulbs that are inside of them. And if we look at this stalk here, we can see the plant in different stages. So here we have a flower that's new. This one back here on the back side is a flower that's about to open. So you can see its sepals actually wrapping around the petals inside. And down here we have an ovary that the flower has already fallen away. And we can see this little dry structure that is poking out there. That's actually the end of the stigma sticking out of the ovary. And this carpal structure here is actually filled with little seeds that are developing. This will swell up and then eventually it will burst open and the seeds can be released. So those flowers go through all these different phases. So anything, any structure that's flowering and has seeds in it is a fruit. So how does that different, how that is different in botanical terms from a vegetable like you've got over there? Well, sometimes in vegetables, you know, they may not have certain types of seeds that we do find in fruits, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a different type of structure uh, than we find in our fruit specimens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if a fruit is anything that has seeds and usually a fleshy structure around that, a vegetable lacks all of those things. Mm -hmm. So like a potato, a potato that we've got here, this would be a vegetable. A potato is actually a piece of the stem that's enlarged and stores sugars in it. The carrot is actually part of the root structure that grows under the ground. When we think about an onion here, we have a, what we call a green onion. We're actually eating the piece of the stem that's down here at the base. And this, if this were a, a large bulb onion, we'd be eating 
this base of the stem, and then the roots are down here. We typically don't eat those. And then with lettuce, what are we eating on lettuce? We're eating the leaves, we're right? We're eating the leaves, <laughs> yes. yep. So we've got the leaf structures. So if we're eating the shoots or the stems or the leaves or the roots or tubers or other structures, those are vegetables. But if we're eating anything that has seeds in it, then that means it's a fruit. Now, what about that cucumber you've got over there? Mm, cucumbers do have seeds inside, okay. right? Little tiny. But we typically but we... talk about them right. as a vegetable. As a vegetable. And they're green. So we often think of the green things as vegetables. As vegetables. Mm -hmm. So things like beans and peas, mm -hmm. even though we call them vegetables, would actually botanically be fruits because they've got seeds inside yes. of them. So intelligence tells me that a tomato is a fruit. But wisdom tells me I shouldn't put it in a fruit salad. Yes, <laughs> it wouldn't taste we'd, right. We'd have some different tastes there. Yes. We wouldn't want to mix together. So when we think about fruits, we typically, we typically think of um, sweet things that we would mm -hmm. eat, but not all fruits are sweet. For example, cucumbers, uh, but something like a melon, like a mm -hmm. watermelon, which is very similar to those, is. Okay? So let's talk about a little bit uh, related to the different structures. So when we think about a fruit, we're actually eating the ovary structure of the plant, like the bulb we have here on the lily. Mm -hmm. okay. So this bulb is the lily, um, lily's ovary, the structure sitting right here, and it has three chambers in it. So if we think about the structures that we typically think of fruits, that's where the ovaries, the female parts are, and where the seeds are going to grow. And if we think about something like that cucumber, that's actually a fruit that's got lots of seeds inside of it. Okay. When we think about um, comparing this fruit to this little fruit down here, okay, we can think about the structures that the plant is growing on. Down here, we have a little scar that you can see on the end of this cucumber. Now this is where the vine would attach, which would be very similar to this little stalk here. We call this the pedicel and then a little structure called the receptacle here. And then you can see sometimes little bits of the sepals or other pieces remaining around here. And those would be like these structures around the bottom of the lily. A tomato would be another good example of this. You can see the stem coming down here. So this is the pedicel structure. And then each of these little, we've got five of these little sepals coming off of here. These would have been the sepals around the base of the flower before this structure formed. So if I look at this and the fruit structure is sitting, if we hold it so that it would normally be with the um, fruit sitting up, if we see the fruit above it, we call this a superior ovary. And if we see it below it, below those structures, like on the apple, Okay. Here we can see these little, these five little structures in here. Those are actually the sepals from the bottom of the flower. So the flower would have been here and the fruit is actually below it where the stem is connected down here. So this would be an inferior ovary because it sits below the flowering structure. Okay. That's a, not something that we commonly <laughs> talk about, but it's a very important thing in botany to help us understand mm -hmm. those different types of things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's our big science word of the day. And we talk about all these different fruits and, and things in terms of dehiscent and indehiscent. And that's the big fancy word for dry or not dry. So dehiscent fruits are ones that dry out and spread their seeds. And indehiscent fruits are ones that tend to keep the flesh around them when they fall to the ground. So we can, we can categorize these fruits in lots of different ways. We can talk about whether they have superior or inferior ovaries. We can say their fruits are dehiscent or indehiscent. We can talk about lots of different ways to categorize them. So we're gonna also gonna have a hands-on activity where you're going to do a dissection of a fruit and try and figure out some of those things about the fruit that you're dissecting. So if we think about um, something like a sunflower, and the sunflower, we get these little sunflower seeds, and these are pretty dried seeds that are going to be left over from the flower. So we'd call this a dehiscent type of seed, and it's going to release those seeds in a very dry form, and they're going to fall to the ground. But something like this tomato, the seeds stay inside of it when the berry falls off of the plant, and the seeds are going to grow from inside of the fruit. 
So a little bit different structure that God's created for those different types of plants. Okay, now another very common misconception <laughs> is the types of names that we give to plants. Mm -hmm. So what's the name of this red fruit here? Mm, strawberry. But <laughs> it's not a berry at right. all. It's not so a berry. while we might call this a strawberry, <laughs> botanically, it's actually not a berry. Mm -hmm. We typically think of berries as sweet, fleshy fruits, mm -hmm. okay? but this is actually not a berry. And we'll explain a little bit more about that in just a second. Okay? Um, a lot of the things that we call nuts Nuts is a, a type of fruit, but many of the nuts that we call nuts actually aren't nuts, just like a lot of the berries that we call berries actually aren't berries. So if you've ever had um, a nut before, you think of something that has a hard shell around it. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite kind of nut? I do love pecans. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Or is it pecans? Well, I'm from Georgia, so okay. we say pecans. Pecans from yeah. Georgia, pecans <laughs> from Idaho. So we've got that little dialectical <laughs> battle going on there. Um, so pecans are actually not a nut truly, mm -hmm. because they grow with a shell around the outside of them, a husk or a hole around the outside of them, not just bare. So an example of a true nut that I have here is something you're probably all familiar with as an acorn. Right? An acorn is a true nut, and we can see this little one developing. It's late July here in Kentucky, and I just pulled this morning. So you can see this little green dot in the middle of this circle out here. This little green dot will develop and grow out here into the, the seed structures inside and it will develop more into an acorn. Now, you don't see any fleshy structure around this, so this is a true nut. But if we look at something like this hickory nut, okay, here's a hickory nut. We pulled off a tree this morning. Um, this is the hickory leaf, so we've got two leaf structures here, and then this is a young, immature hickory nut that's growing there. And you can see the scars on the tip of here where the flower petals would have been, the sepals. So this has an inferior ovary, and this is what it will grow up into. So here's one that's a little more mature, and you notice this has four different sections around here on the hull. And inside of it, this is one from last year, you can see these four sections, they would wrap around this little nut that's on the inside. So this piece fits in here, and then four of those fit around, and that's a hickory nut. And inside of here would be the seed. But again, it's not a true nut because it has this fleshy structure around the outside of it. Um, walnuts are the same way. Got a walnut back here, Claude's hiding underneath the walnut branch. And these are, this is a black walnut. A lot of these grow around here. So you can see each of the big leaves, uh, leaves sticking out here, and then each of the fruits here. And you can see the scar from where the sepals are. So again, we've got an inferior ovary sitting underneath of the floral structures. Okay? So those are the types of things that we think of as nuts that really aren't true nuts, but we, we talk about them mm -hmm. in food terms as being nuts. Okay? Um, something you may have had fun with in the past is something like this. This is an ash tree seed called a Samara. So this type of seed is called a Samara. You might recognize these more from maple trees. Typically think people typically think of them. And if you break these in half when they get dry and throw them up in the air, what happens? They're helicopters. They spin around like little <laughs> helicopters and they're very fun. And that's a way that God has given uh, these plants. So this would be a dehiscent plant. They're dry seeds without that, a lot of that fleshy material mm -hmm. around them. These plants would then spread on the wind and the wind can carry them away and they'd be able to grow a new tree somewhere else. So there's a type of seed dispersal uh, that we have in the ash trees and the maples and others called a Samara. This is an example of grass. So this is some wild grass that was growing out in the park. And you can see, if I give a little tug here, each of these little pieces growing off of here is one seed. So these are dry structures, so again, we'd say they're dehiscent, and they're gonna form little kernels inside of there. We call these grains, and popcorn would be another example of this, how each of these little grains is an individual seed of the corn plant. So those are typically classified as grains, and there are some other more <laughs> complex scientific names for different types of grains that we can grow. Mm -hmm. All right, the next one we're gonna look at here is a legume. This one is one that you're probably familiar with. <laughs> These, 
you would call peas. And we typically call this a snow pea or a snap pea. And you can see very clearly on this one, here's the stem up on this end. And you can see the sepals right here that were the base of the flower. So is this a superior or an inferior ovary if it's sitting above where the flower was? So the flower would have been here, the ovaries above it. So this was actually a superior ovary. And you can actually see the end right up here, this little tail sticking off. That's actually the dried stigma that would have been where the pollen grains landed and transferred down here. Now these are very interesting because they don't form a round structure like we think of a lot of fruits, but they form this structure. And we can see these individual pods inside of here. And if we break this open, we can see the individual fruits down along there. Let me see if I can get this stick underneath here. It. Yep. I might have should have opened one of these up mm -hmm. before we got the cameras rolling. <laughs> so each of these seeds inside of here comes from a single ovule. And we can see in here there were six ovules that got fertilized and gave us these seeds that began to develop. And with these, we actually eat the outer coating and the seeds together. Some peas, shelling peas, they have that tough fibrous mm -hmm. shell around the ovaries protecting them, the carpal structure. And we don't eat those because mm -hmm. they're very they're chewy. They're too tough. They're too chew <laughs> chewy and tough. Mm -hmm. Now something like a deer or a cow or something like that would be able to eat them, but our, our bodies are not made to do that. Mm -hmm. So the arrangement of these is called axillary because their, their ovaries are on the axis of, or the ovules are on the axis of the ovary line there. So different structure. Legumes, other things would be things like kidney beans and lima mm -hmm. beans and other types of beans that we'd eat. Peanuts are also mm -hmm. a legume. Yes. The coolest thing about peanuts is they don't grow as fruits above the ground. Mm. You're from Georgia. <laughs> you have <laughs> lots of peanuts in Georgia. You drive past a peanut field and you don't see any peanuts hanging on the plants because the peanuts are actually under the ground, much like potatoes grow, and they have to dig them out and harvest them from underneath. Mm -hmm. Okay, so legume is another type of fruit that we can think about. Now this one has a funny name. The next one we're going to talk about is called a droop, mm. but it's not spelled like the saggy kind of droop, right. <laughs> D-R-U-P-E. So if you think about a cherry or this plum mm -hmm. or a nectarine or a mm -hmm. peach, Again, avocados. we're back to Georgia, avocados. Which okay? I know you're not fond of. I really don't like <laughs> avocados. Okay? They're just, they're not my favorite. I'd eat them if I was going to die, but I'm not going <laughs> to choose to eat one. So this type of fruit is called a droop. And if you've ever eaten a peach or a nectarine, you know that it only has one seed inside of it. So we can see the stem that's left over right here. And this one's so ripe, I can probably pull the stem right out of there. So it's got a stem and the flower would have been attached here at the base of the stem. I can see the little scars around the base of the stem. And then the, the ovaries up here and the fruit would have grown here. So the stigma would have been sticking out of this section right here where the little bump is. And you can actually see a line right down the middle of a peach or a plum or a nectarine where it's divided. And inside of there, you'll find a single seed. Okay? So that type of fruit is called a droop. Mm -hmm. And something like a walnut is very similar to this. Mm -hmm. So we often call a walnut a droopaceous nut mm -hmm. because it's kind of like a droop and it's kind of like a nut. So some of them don't fit into real nice, neat categories that we think about. Mm -hmm. Um, next one, Hesperidium. You've got a couple mm -hmm. Hesperidia mm -hmm. over there. So when we think about citrus fruits, these form a structure that we call a Hesperidium. So if we were to take this small mandarin orange here, you can see this is where the stem would have been connected. And then sometimes, like in this orange, you can actually see the little petal, the sepal structures coming off of here where they would have branched out. And depending on how the fruit was picked in those things, you'll see these different structures here. But inside of a Hesperidium, we actually have this very thick rind that you're familiar with as orange peel. And then each of the um, ovaries is divided up into little segments or wedges. And this is a seedless variety because we've bred many types of fruits like grapes and oranges to be seedless, but every once in a while, he'll bite into one of these and get mm, a seed. And you'll find a seed, yep. yeah. And the seeds will form right down in this little pocket right here. 
and sometimes there will even be multiples in a wild type orange. Mm -hmm. Now you grew up in Florida. Were there many orange groves in the oh, area? Oh yes. Grew up? Okay. <laughs> Lots of orange trees. <laughs> Lots of orange and, and maybe even yes, some lemons. Yes, have in our and backyard. Yes. And every time there was a hurricane, they'd all fly and hit your house all night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hearing your house getting pelted with oranges yes. rather than yes. rather than hail or something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. The next type um, is called a pome or a palm, and that's an apple. So we already looked at the apple a little bit. Now the apple is a little different because this isn't actually the ovary part that you're eating. So this is actually called a false fruit because the structure that we're seeing here is actually the receptacle of the flower. The flower scar is here. You can see the leftover uh, sepals. And if you could peel those back carefully and dissect them, you'd find there are five there. How many petals do you suppose are on an apple flower? Mm, five, five. Maybe. Yes. And oftentimes the number of sepals and the number of ovaries inside of the fruit is going to match the petal structure because that's completed there. So we have the stem here and the structure called the receptacle. So since the ovary is below where the flower would have been, this would be an inferior ovary structure. All right. This one has a funny name. You might get a giggle out of this one. So anything like a cucumber or a squash or a melon, these are called peepos. <laughs> Okay, say that with me, peepo. That's a, that's a fun name to say. So you can say, we need to go to the store and buy some peepos. And you'd be looking for a structure like this. So if we think again, we can see this end where the stem was connected. We can see the flower scar around here where the corolla of the flower and, this, and the sepals would have been. And down here would have been the end. This little tiny scar right there is where the stigma would have been sticking out. And so this is actually... Um, a superior ovary. Now this looks very much like a zucchini, but a zucchini, if you ever get a zucchini flower, their flower actually forms on mm -hmm. the tip out here. So it's an inferior ovary. So they look very mm -hmm. similar, but have different types of ovary growth and structures. Okay, aggregate fruits are the next one we're going to talk about. Now again, you probably think of these, which I picked out in a park near my home where I go disc golfing all the time, <laughs> you probably call these blackberries, blackberries or raspberries. Mm -hmm. But again, they're not, not a berry. Berries. <laughs> and we call them blackberries, but they're not. These mm -hmm. are called an aggregate fruit because you actually see each of these little round balls is an individual fruit. And each little ball will have a fruit inside of it. And this is actually sticking around the core of the receptacle. So sometimes you may get a raspberry and the raspberry looks hollow in the middle. And that's because the receptacle is a little white structure inside of there that grows up and then the soft fruit will be able to peel away from this. So I can actually pull this and bring it out of there and you can see the base of the receptacle and that receptacle goes up into the center, so the white thing you see in the middle there, that's the receptacle. And if I could carefully peel back each of those berries, we'd be, be left with a little white cone inside of there, right? So that is a blackberry called an aggregate fruit. Mm -hmm. So again, blackberries really aren't berries, even though we call them berries, not, not in a uh, specific sense. Another one that we mentioned earlier, the strawberry. Strawberries are really not berries. They're a type of aggregate fruit. So again, the receptacle, the part that's underneath the base of the flower, the sepals are here, and the fleshy part is actually the receptacle. Each little tiny dot that you see on there is one seed connected to one ovary, right? And they dry out on the surface, and this type of seed structure is called an achene. So you can see in this one, there are little dimples around there. So each one of these could grow into a strawberry plant potentially, but it'd take a couple years for it to be uh, producing fruit. And That'd those be a great challenge is for a student to pick out all the seeds in the strawberry and let us know how many there are. <laughs> That'd be a great challenge. <laughs> yes. yes, that'd be excellent. All right, so we've got aggregate fruits that grow in those different structures, and then we have a, um, a true berry. I don't see any berries here. Hmm. Oh, wait, here they are. Not the what tomatoes. you would expect, right? <laughs> Tomatoes are actually a berry. Right? They have a 
fleshy structure where the ovary sits and inside of the tomato, if you've ever cut into one, you'll know that there are little rows of seeds inside of there. Another true berry is actually a blueberry. Okay, so a blueberry is the first berry that we've talked about today that's actually a, a berry. So if we were to cut into here, we'd be able to see each of the seeds inside of there. But they kind of match the color of the flesh, so they're not going to show up real well on the camera. And this is not a berry you'd want to make a pie out of. No. <laughs> no. Or so, a cobbler. <laughs> so tomatoes are not a sweet berry, yes. so people typically don't think about them as a berry in that way. Mm -hmm. All right, one last fruit type we're going to talk about, although there were a lot of different divisions and things, is this type, and this is called a pineapple, of course. But the fruit type that we're looking at here is called either a multiple or a composite fruit. And what happens is this actually grows up off of the top of the plant. So if you can see down here, there's this scar, and this was the stalk that this grew up on. And this is actually the top of the plant up here, all of these leafy structures. And down below, there were other leaves that stick out of this stalk and a root. And then each of these little circles that you see on a pineapple actually had a little flower on them. Okay, often purple, they're very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the scars, these little flaps that you can see, are actually each of the flaps left over from the sepals and then the stigma right here. So each individual flower would have been here, and this represents one ovary structure, but they're all fused together, and you can't separate them. Like with a raspberry, you could carefully pull off each of those little balls, and you'd get different structures. These are all blended together in one structure, connected back to the stalk in the middle. So this is a modified type of fruit, and if I have to think about it, probably my favorite fruit in the whole world is yes. some good fresh mm -hmm. pineapple. So you actually have in one pineapple, you actually have hundreds of little fruits that you can eat. Mm -hmm. Now here's a trick if you've never tried this. We, this pineapple is not quite ripe enough, I can tell by the green structures here. But if you cut across the bottom here, you can actually peel each of these. So if you get your thumb down in behind here, and peel down, or you can even take a spoon and stick it in here and mm -hmm. peel it down. Start from the bottom, you can actually peel off each of those ovary sections mm -hmm. and then just eat yeah. them and throw away the little hole. And then you don't have to worry about the core. And it's actually a pretty efficient way to eat a pineapple because you don't waste yeah. a lot of the trim pieces that you'd normally throw away if you cut it. So fun, interesting way to eat a pineapple, but it's really messy, especially if you've got a good, ripe, juicy pineapple. Especially if you dip it in chocolate fondue like I like to. Oh, now we're getting... Now yeah, we're getting pineapple's right. really good in Speaking chocolate fondue. Speaking of chocolate, <laughs> yes, that's a I think segue. two of my favorite fruits yes. are sitting here on this table yes. that we haven't talked about yet. Mm -hmm. One of them is right here, mm -hmm. and the other one is right here. So chocolate and coffee are actually fruit products. They come from the beans that mm -hmm. we get from these plants. So these are actually the seeds of a coffee plant. A coffee berry looks a lot like a cherry. And each of these, each cherry has two of these seeds in it and they would fit together. We usually get rid of the outer hole. It's called cascara fruit, but we can use it in different products and it's got a kind of a mm -hmm. floral taste to it. Some people say it tastes almondy and different flavors. And chocolate. And even from the chocolate, we're taking a cocoa bean mm -hmm. and opening the pods and extracting the seeds to make the, the cocoa. And then, to get it even better, we can mix the two wonderful fruits together. Yes. So if you ever need a good fruity snack, I would reach for a chocolate bar and a, a cup of coffee. A chocolate-covered coffee bean. Chocolate-covered <laughs> yes. coffee beans, a chocolate latte. So that would be my choice yes. for a good fruity snack. But if we add too much of the creams and fats, that yes. doesn't get as healthy for us <laughs> as other fruits might be. So when we think about all this amazing variety of the fruits that God has created for us, it's just another testimony to how kind he is to us to give us things that will nourish our bodies, that will give us all the nutrients that we need to survive, and just wonderful flavors to enjoy. Such a variety, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so we can try all these different things. Yeah. So I always encourage you to try different things. Yes, that's yes. a great thing to do. Yes. So you've probably had bananas before. They're one of the most common berries. A banana is actually a modified berry, okay? So 
it's one of the most common things we, we try. We eat these types of things all mm -hmm. the time. So we'd encourage you to maybe go to the market and find something you haven't tried. What can you think is probably the most exotic fruit you've ever tried? I would probably say dragon fruit is. Okay, dragon yes, fruit. I hadn't tried it till about a year ago, uh -huh. and it was very interesting. The texture <laughs> is on you. It looks like um, cookies and cream ice cream yeah, inside. Yeah, so you cut it in half, and mm -hmm. it's kind of a white and brown mm -hmm. or white and black mottled. You can scoop it out mm -hmm. and, and eat it that way. That's a great one. Um, the largest fruit is called a jackfruit from Asia. Mm -hmm. They can get um, mm -hmm. up to like 40 kilos. They can be very large. That's a fun fruit flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, they make lots of shakes and things like that with that type of fruit in, uh, mm -hmm. in, South, in Southern Asia. So lots of things to enjoy and try. So maybe you can get out and that's the way that you can be exploring God's creation mm -hmm. is go by trying some of the fruits that he's made for you that you've never tried before. And that way you can give glory to God for all of his amazing creation. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, get out and explore all of God's amazing creation.